Hello guys, I'm Jacob, and while I'm in isolation and now entering the holidays of uni, I thought I'd try something new and create my own CSGO map. Also, I'll quickly mention that you're gonna have to ignore everything in the bottom left of my whiteboard. That's just a list of the like 20 hours of lectures I'm behind watching, um, and now that I think about it, I think this is a way of me procrastinating. Uh, now, I've made a CSGO map before, which turned out okay, uh, but I'm hoping this one will work out way better now because I'll have the hindsight of like a finished map and what to expect. I'm still going to be learning a lot along the way and I think it'll be really cool if you join me. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a really basic layout idea for my map. And the thing most maps follow for this is like a four quadrant style because it's pretty much it assures that it's going to be functional. Uh, but because it's so like good, a lot of maps use it like Dust 2. Inferno, Mirage, and Overpass. Uh, so I wanted to mix it up a little bit, or at least try, um, and make something original. So my first idea to mix it up a little bit was to have the sites next to each other, um, like with something in the middle, but make it so you'd still have to travel a fair bit to get from one to the other. Um, alternatively, I could have one bomb site right above the other, um, but this is like it's like 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 Nuke does it. Um, but the idea I do end up doing in the end was a combination of these where I had them next to each other but with like a height difference between the two which allowed me to have a one-way drop. Uh, my second idea to mix it up was to give the terrorist team a bomb site that was easier to take um, but somehow still find a way to balance it. I thought of this for a while um, but this is finally me putting it into action. Um, I end up doing this as well. Um, and I make it so you really have to commit to this bomb site as a terrorist by dropping down a one way as well. Um, and I also made the retake really quick from the other side. Uh, and I was pretty happy with what I got in the end. Uh, so this is me drawing out the really basic like topology of the map, really just so I could ask my friends what they thought. Something I really wanted to make sure I do this time, which I haven't done before, was make sure I take note of where the choke points were, um, or where they're going to be. Um, and put them in like really important places of the map. Something I'm trying to make unique on this map is that one of the bomb sites um, is is a is a choke point. Um, in particular, the one that the terrorists would have to commit to get early. Um, so if they beat that initial fight, it should be really easy to to plant the bomb. After this, I brushed off my tablet and got ready to get to work. Uh, and then realize I actually had to go to work because Scott Morrison considers fast food an essential service. When I got back from work, I pretty much copied what I had on the whiteboard, but from a top-down view um, and labeled the choke points. Uh, and then I kind of like changed moves, um, cha uh, changed things around, moved them a bit to make sure it was a bit more functional. After that, I added the times that each team should get to the different parts of the map. Uh, obviously, the choke points would have the same time for both teams, uh, so that you know that's kind of the idea. Um, and based on those, I made the times it should take to go through certain parts of the map, kind of like the lengths. Um, and if you have any sort of working eyesight, you might notice that these aren't to scale at all. But that's really the point of this, because like based on this, I was able to make a basis for the map that was to scale. Um, and based on the fact that the player runs 260 units per second with a knife out, I was uh, able to determine how many units lengths of the map should be. After this, I took a break and played a comp with my friends, and I really am only mentioning this because of the sick ass pistol. The next morning, I started on actually building the map on SDK. Um, first, I just built the floor out of no draw brushes, and I kept referring to the Photoshop image I drew as a reference. Um, optimization isn't really a big deal at this stage of the map, but I've just found out that using no draw every time you want to draw a brush is a good habit, and then changing the textures on it later. After that, I placed some walls around the floors and some details around the choke points of the map, and then I added some terrorist and counter terrorist spawns and buy zones. Next, I did a big hollow skybox brush around the map and placed a light underscore environment just to make sure my map uh, was pretty when I opened the game. <laughs> Something went wrong and the skybox was all funky. Uh, and for some reason, my first guess was that I didn't give the light environment a valid direction to point at, but that didn't fix anything. My second guess was that I needed to compile the map using different settings, but that didn't really fix anything either. Uh, it actually turned out that the skybox I was using in the map properties didn't actually exist. 
Uh, so yeah, I changed it to the Vertigo Skybox, I believe. Um, and thank god that worked. Uh, I've never missed blue skies that much, and that took me like an hour and something to work out. I hopped on Discord, and I got my friend to help me, and we test out the timings of all the choke points. Uh, we also ended up playing a couple rounds and it turned out to be pretty fun, which was promising already. The timings ended up being perfect, so going back into SDK, I added some more details to the map and finally started applying some theme to it. Uh, I'm going to base my map on the favela in Rio, which will allow me to use a lot of uh, verticality in my map. Um, I ended up making one of the routes from T-spawn like, along the roofs of some buildings. Uh, and I think I might do that for some other parts of my map as well. Uh, I also really heightened the CT side of the map, um, as that's going to be like further up the hill. I really chose this theme because growing up I played a lot of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Uh, and I'd say about two or three of the missions took place in like this area. Um, and they were my favourite, they were so good. Um, yeah, so I'm, I hope it turns out good. After that, I downloaded some custom dev textures to make my map a little prettier and compiled my map again. I was really happy with what I got and I thought that was plenty of progress for the first episode. Uh, and all in all, this ended up being about three and a half to four hours of work time. Uh, so this has gone pretty good so far, I believe. In the next part, I reckon I'm going to detail the map a fair, a fair bit more and add cover and props to places to make the map a lot more functional. Uh, and I'll probably get some friends together to play test the progress and hopefully they'll enjoy it. I'd actually like to say a big thank you to all my friends that helped me uh, by playing on my last map and giving me constant feedback. Um, and I'd also like to say thank you to the map core and source engine discords for helping me out so much when it came to learning SDK. Uh, like so many times, even on this map already, so many times I could just like ping a message to the to the like help chats and stuff and I pretty much immediately get a reply by someone and they've proven to be so so helpful. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to everyone for watching this whole video for some reason. Um, it really means a lot and I hope you have a really good night. See ya.